Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone back to another amazing, incredible, I don't know, episode that probably wasn't going to happen, but now it is, of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's an accurate description. Um, I'm sorry, everybody. My, my audio is not going to sound as good as it usually does. Uh, I'm on the road, uh, you know, doing things for things. Are you out starring in a porno called Demon Hole? No, no, no. Turns out that is not what I'm doing, but I'm just, uh, out doing some things for work and, uh, so I have to, I, I, I wasn't able to bring all my audio equipment with me this time. So you're equipment less. All right. Good to know. Yeah. I'm equipment less. So everyone, I am your host as always, Mr. Matt Hinshaw based currently in Prescott, Arizona. And there is mysterious Mike talent. Uh, I don't know. Where the hell are you, Mike? Uh, I, I'm, I'm somewhere, you know, uh, you're still on the East coast, right? You're not like, yeah, the yeah. Coast? Yeah. No, I'm still on the East coast, but, uh, you know, not, not in, uh, intercourse, uh, at the moment. So, uh, I wasn't able to bring all the equipment with me. So we're still going to have to worry about you falling asleep throughout this episode. Uh, Yeah. All right. Yes, good to know. You, you you definitely you definitely might have that happen, but uh, Matt, before that happens, uh, I wanted to ask you, what are you drinking? <sighs> well, Mike, thanks for asking. I am not drinking anything special. I am drinking a staple of Hollywood, a staple of my refrigerator. Or not my refrigerator. If my refrigerator's broken, I still would have this beer. That is the Champagne of beers, Miller High Life. Awesome, awesome. You know, that's always a good beer. It's always a good one. So, Mike, what local IPA did you drive around in your rental car and hunt down and find in somewhere East Coast, United States? Well, uh, it's somewhat disappointing. Um, I was feeling like getting some local beer, but then all of a sudden I saw this beer and I was like, I really like this one. So I got the Fear Movie Lions. It's the Stone Double IPA, and it's just a fantastic beer. So I'm sorry. It's okay, Mike. It's okay. I don't think you've drank that one on the pod yet. Not the double IPA. I think you've only drank their other IPA. Okay. All right. So we'll let it slide. But, you know, as you see, I'm a poor bastard. I just drink Miller High Life all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying uh, IPAs are cheap because they're not. Oh, I never said that. You pay lots of money, lots and lots of money to make sure you get your nice bitterness on. Yes, yes, I like it super bitter. Well, all right, Mike. This week, we're talking about a tributary that I was highly, highly anticipating from the minute I saw the trailer that was released at one of the film festivals. I don't remember which one. Was it at Sundance or was it at uh, the um, uh, over there in Texas? Uh, what's that? Uh... It was one of the big ones. I don't remember. It was either Sundance's or Tribeca or that uh, the. It wasn't South by Southwest. Oh, okay. Uh, did they screen it at South by Southwest? I feel like they did. They might have, but I don't know. I maybe, maybe not. I, I I'm surprised they didn't do it at like maybe like Monster Fest, which is also um, in Austin, Texas, but it's uh, not during South by Southwest. It's its own thing. That's the film festival that if I had money, I really would like to go and check out. I think that would be a really neat one to go to because that one's mainly uh, horror and sci-fi and uh, stuff in those kind of genres, 100%. Like, that's all the movies they bring out. 
Wow, man. Uh, you know, you had me at horror. Of course. I know how much you love your whores. Horror. <laughs> no. you, you and your, 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 it's never going to get old for you. That's like, uh, that's what she said. It, yeah. You know, that's what she said. Never gets old ever. I don't care. You know, I'm still going to be saying it when I'm lying in my deathbed next week. Uh, yeah. Are you, are you going to have that, uh, on your, your, uh, gravestone? No, man. You know, I'm getting my, you know, I'm paying someone to take my ashes into space and shoot them out towards where the star Wars is. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Did I just interrupt? And that's what she said. Joke. You you did, but that's okay. No, 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 no. You need to go back and do it again because I want to hear this. So on your on your tombstone, is it? I thought it was just going to say that's what. Yeah, maybe she. Yeah, like like that T-shirt I have, the thinking man. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what she said. T-shirt. Yeah. Well, if I ever if I have the money to get a tombstone, but no, I'm going with uh, ashes into outer space, and hopefully I will get to float all the way to Alderaan. Or the remnants of Alderaan, shall we say. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right, Mike. So let's go ahead. Let's rock this uh, rundown on. And now I will say the entire title right here, right now for everyone. But we are going to shorten it to either Wicked or Extremely Wicked for the rest of the pod. But today, for our tributary, we are talking about Extremely Wicked shockingly evil and vile uh yeah man that's exactly what we're talking about and uh this this uh movie uh is starring lily collins uh zach efron angelina sarafan sydney Vollmer, uh james hetfield uh dylan baker Haley joe osmond and uh, Jim Parsons. It's directed by uh, Joe Birdlinger. Its uh, writers are Elizabeth Kendall and Michael Werwe. It's about a courtroom frenzy ensues and sweeps 1970s America when a young single mother reluctantly tips the attention of a widespread manhunt towards her longtime boyfriend, Ted Bundy. All right, Mike. Well, I, we both have talked about this. We both watched the documentary series, even though it's a short series. I think it's four or five episodes. Yeah, I think it, I think it was about four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was four. The Ted Bundy tapes. Before yes. watching this, and that's what got both of us stoked, you watched the Ted Bundy tapes, and you're like, dude, you got to watch this. It's freaking amazing. I cannot believe this. And I was like, all right. So I sat down, and just like you, I got hooked, and I watched one a night until I was done with it. Now, nice, nice. Saying that, going into this movie, I really was, I don't want to say let down, but I, f- I felt let down watching this movie. No, no, Matt. Why did you feel let down? I, I, cause I, you know, uh, I actually like this movie, but I, I want to hear why you felt let down. Well, I enjoyed the last hour. I would say probably the last hour, the last hour and 20 minutes or so. Um, I, I don't want to ruin it for those of you who do not know the story. This is a historical film. It is based off true life, things like that. But the second half of the film is basically his trial in Florida. And when it came on to that, that's when it finally started clicking. And I think it was a good film from then on. The first half was all over the place. It didn't make sense. It jumped around a lot. It just, I didn't, I didn't like it. I did not like the first half at all. The second half was fantastic. It's like it was like almost like it was two different directors or writers or something. It was very strange to me. Uh Matt, do you think some of your opinion was uh skewed by just watching the the Ted Bundy tapes where you had kind of a more I don't know, knowledgeable experience like I was trying to watch this knowing that not everyone's going to see the Ted Bundy tapes before it and uh, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, but to me, 
I really did like the way that this was portrayed in a different view. I agree because with that. this is I really like he, that. Yeah, this this was done from the eyes of uh, Ted Bundy's girlfriend for the most part. Right, who is also the writer, well, the writer of the book that this movie is based on. Her pen name, it is not a real name, her pen name is Elizabeth Kendall. Oh, awesome. I I didn't know that, but uh, I, uh, I did like the way that this was portrayed you know, from a kind of a different angle. Yeah, I agree with that. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was great. I just didn't like how it jumped around that first half. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. And then towards the end of it, again, I'm trying not to ruin it, but towards the end of it, specifically the very end, they really kind of start lining it all up. But it's like, it just, it, it was, I don't know. I expected more, I guess. Do you think they were trying to cover too much too fast? Because, I mean, there's there's a lot of material. Like, unfortunately, Ted Bundy's career or, or, or history is is vast. It is. It's frighten, frighteningly vast, yeah. And it's hard to get everything, I think, in a... You know, this is, uh, you know, an hour and 50 minute or so movie in... in even in the Ted Bundy tapes, which is like four episodes of, I think, about an hour. Yeah, most I think most it, of them were an hour. Maybe some were a little over, but it's, it's a hell of a lot more than this movie. It's a lot of information, and it's just real quick. Yeah, even <laughs> the Ted so, Bundy tapes, it was really quick. I don't know. I think they were just trying to to fit that in there, but uh, um. So Matt, I I'm. I understand what you're saying, but I still really like this movie. Uh, I thought Zac Efron was pretty much perfectly cast as Ted Bundy because he was a kind of a handsome, charismatic guy. And there's so much film from from the Ted Bundy tapes and stuff. This was the first, unfortunately, this was the first trial where it was open to the public so everyone got to watch this on tv this is well not so much open to the public all trials are open to the public every single trial is open to the public the problem is is typically you have to go and sit in the courtroom this is the first one where it was ever televised where they allowed cameras in the courtroom nationally yeah no i i okay so i said that incorrectly it's Matt, all good you man said it. i just you know from my former life i had to deal with cameras in the courtroom a lot especially in arizona because as i was you know working here and uh in the tribune and things like that back in the day there's been lots of battles of having cameras in the courtroom here in arizona and it finally got past where they're allowed in there but they limit them and you have to get the judges passed and you can't make noise anyways it's i don't want to go off too much but I know a lot about this because I've had to deal with it. I've had to sit in courtrooms. It's boring as hell. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this was the first time that they had a big national televised trial. And it's it was incredible in a couple ways to see him doing everything that was and how charismatic he was, like, I mean, it really was hard for even me, who didn't know the guy, to be like, that guy's a serial killer? It's almost like it's like split personalities, but it's not, because he knows what he was doing. He just never, ever, ever, ever admitted it until right before he died. Right, right. And then, uh, yeah, it was... uh, Anyway, I I just wanted to say that I I really I did like this movie. You know, could the some of the beginning stuff been done a little bit better? Yeah, I think so. But I I did I did like this movie quite a bit. And uh, would I recommend people seeing it? I would say you 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 should see it. But I mean, it's not the best subject. It's all <laughs> I mean, it's a movie about a serial killer. So it's. And it's real. It's 100% real. 
Uh, I mean, some of the story things I think are embellished, but for the most part, a lot of the content is real. We we have a lot of evidence. Yeah, yeah, the, and there were some things where they. Um, w- I I don't know if we'll ever get to this movie, but the movie about the hot shots here in uh, Prescott that passed uh, in that big fire, they did a lot of things, took a lot of liberties with that movie that upset a lot of the locals here, myself included. But uh, they did that with this film on a couple of the characters, like um, Haley Joel Osment's uh, character. He did not exist in her life, period. They did that to try and help show how she used multiple friends, family, um, other relationships to get over uh, Ted Bundy, the main protagonist. The, uh, the, um, I'm forgetting the name they used in the movie. Uh, Lily Collins. Yeah, her her boyfriend. Yes, but she did not have. She had multiple relationships throughout that time. She did not have one relationship like that that throughout the whole thing. But the director, the director, the writer, or whatever, was saying that Haley Joel Osment basically is a composite of multiple people that helped her through the time of Ted Bundy and trying to get over him and all that stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. So that's one thing that's not true. Okay. So anyways, I just want to point that out. But no, um, I, you know, I agree. I think this is probably one of the best performances ever by Zac Efron. I think the casting was right on and he comes off as charming. He comes off as, uh, you know, there's something else behind his eyes kind of thing. And I think Zac Efron does that very well. Yeah, no, I, 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 I thought he he pulled it off. Oh, it's such this kind of creepy story. Like he was so good at at manipulating people. Uh, Ted Bundy, uh, he took advantage of their kindness, and it was it's awful. But man, the guy was. I guess he was extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. Well, yeah, and I mean, though, you know, the judge was the one that actually said those line, that line, and I believe that was when he was sentencing him or something like that, but that was him, the judge, actually describing the uh, murders. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think you're right. Um, I, I, uh, I do know from just recently watching the Ted Bundy tapes and watching the movie that uh, John Malkovich's character, which is uh, Judge Edward... Uh, D. Cowart, uh said that he would have loved to see Ted Bundy as a lawyer because he thought he would have made a good lawyer, but you chose a different path. And, you know, I, I was just, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, and that's true. That's a hundred percent true line that the judge said in real life, not just dramatized in the movie. No, no. Yeah, no, it was, that was a hundred percent exactly what he said like it's real it's real interesting to see the judge especially you know in the ted bundy tapes where the judge is stating you know he doesn't have any animosity against him i don't know how you don't have animosity against someone that butchered all these women it's horrible but he doesn't he you know he just and he tells him you know yeah i would have loved to have seen you have been a lawyer i would have loved to see you in my courtroom kind of thing it's pretty pretty crazy on that end as well yeah, no, it, it is crazy. Well, Mike, speaking about crazy, how does extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Ooh, good question, man. Uh, yeah, this one was a little bit tricky as well. Uh, Zac Efron doesn't uh, star in any of the uh, MCU movies yet. Uh, but I did find a, rela- a relation. Uh, we have uh, Jody uh, Byron, uh, who is a makeup artist uh, on The Avengers. The original Avengers? Yeah, The Original Avengers. Nice. Yeah. It, yeah, this this one was a little bit 
I, I guess it's it, there's not a ton of characters in it, uh, really, and so it's sometimes it's a little harder to find some of the some of the less big time movies found a relation. So it's all good. Good. Hang in there, Mike. Hang in there. We're almost done. Wake yourself up. Get a shot of coffee or something. I don't know. Hang in there. Okay. All right. You'll be all right. I'm hanging in. You'll make it. So, all right. Well, I guess we'll get into some spoilers uh, for those of you who have do not know the Ted Bundy story. Uh, I don't know how much we will talk about spoilers, but uh, I'll go back and address your question you asked me earlier. I think uh, if you want to see this movie, definitely watch the Ted Bundy tapes either before or after uh, you watch this movie. I definitely think it is a companion piece. I think Netflix did that on purpose. And it they both play well off of each other. I feel that I went in knowing a little bit more so I could see the dramatization of the film better. I don't want to point out you know things, oh, this they screwed this up, they screwed this up, whatever. It it just gave me more knowledge behind it. Um, one thing I have to say that I will point out, um, I'm glad they didn't really show any of the murders. They show him like attacking one girl towards the end and, you know, grabbing her. But even the lady that uh, escaped Ted Bundy, they didn't even show that. So I think that was a good thing. So they're not, you know, promoting the violence. They're not saying, oh, you know, this is okay kind of thing. I really didn't want to see that. I wanted to see more about this, but uh, one sector that I did really want to see about, and they probably would have had to made it make it up a little bit because I seriously doubt they had a whole lot of information on what happened, but there was that time period where he's in Colorado and he goes missing for three or four days when he escapes. I really would have liked right. to have seen what all happened during that time period and what he did. They, they, they talk about it in the Ted Bundy tapes a little bit that he went here and he did this and with this cabin and all this, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more than that. Then they, you get to see him like trying to escape town and then wham, bam, he's back. You know, they caught him again. So I would have liked to have seen a little bit more than that. I would have liked to have, you know, uh, maybe seen a little bit more of, um, him, you know, maybe even standing outside like the sorority house and stuff like that. Not actually committing in the murders. I really just didn't need to see that. But I would have liked to have seen him in the different places because he literally went from the West Coast to the East Coast almost on a like a female murdering rampage. It's crazy. Yeah, after he escaped from custody, like it's uh there's there's a point in the movie, uh, which uh, you know, I think it might have been some creative license as well, but who knows. Uh, where the police was it the was it the sheriff? No, who was it? Was the sheriff? No, the warden. Somebody was like, no, it was the prosecutor. It was the head prosecutor. He's like, hey, you might have gotten away in Washington, and you might have gotten away in Colorado, but this is Florida. You're gonna you're gonna deal with this. You know, I think that was the county sheriff, and I think that might have been a little bit of a uh, uh, creative license, as you say, but that scene where he's reading um, what he's being charged with, you know, they have video evidence of that actually happening. So I, I no, yeah, get past yeah. him, but again, the only people that would know if that took place would have been the sheriff or Ted Bundy. Yeah, yeah, no, you're you're right. The the, the When he reads the charges out loud, that was real, but the... The scene right before that, I don't know if that was real, but that was okay. Uh, to me, it was just a ride in these other states. We're not going to let you do this. Like, <laughs> like we don't know what's going on with these other states. Dude, you uh, cut out there a little bit, so uh, go ahead and say what you said again. In the... Uh, in that scene where uh, the sheriff is uh, approaching Ted Bundy, he's like, uh, you're not going to get away with this. Uh, and he's just highlighting how the other states kind of failed. And I thought that was a good scene because I think it helped establish a lot of wh what was going to go on and how Florida was going to be different. 
Um, right. It, so, and, and that was, I think, one of the things that they also pointed out in the uh, Ted Bundy tapes as well, not to keep referencing it, but in the Ted Bundy tapes, they were pointing out how Florida, you know, they're a lot more like Texas today. I'm not sure if uh, Florida is still like this now. I'm not sure. But they're very aggressive when it comes to death row. You know, the person isn't going to sit on death row for 50 years. They're going to execute that person. Whereas nowadays, the majority of the states, the people just sit on death row forever until they ultimately die of natural causes instead of actually going through the death penalty, where Texas is really known for executing the people on death row. And so I think it uh, parallels that where, you know, they're trying to point out that, hey, you know, Washington might not and, you know, uh, Oregon might not and Colorado might not, but we we will execute you if you're convicted kind of thing. And it just shows you how ruthless the sheriff was as well of that county that, you know, you're not escaping us. And he never escaped out of Florida. He escaped out of Colorado. And do you remember what the other state was where he escaped prison? Uh, I think he escaped out of Colorado twice. Out of Colorado twice. Okay. Yeah. And he, yeah. he was like, yeah. That's yeah, because I think he here. did the, the, the jailhouse uh, high, uh, break, which which we kind of saw in the movie. Uh, but there's another breakout, which I don't think they really explained too much. But he – well, I mean, they, they showed a little bit. But he uh, he went up through his cell up into the ceiling and then disappeared. Yeah, there's yeah the the one in Aspen was the one where he jumped out of the second story window and ran off, and then the second one they go into a lot more detail in the tapes too, but he actually like steals like a hacksaw blade and cuts a hole in the roof and escapes out the roof, or ceiling sorry not roof. He uh, he does and then he steals. Uh, apparently it w- it led to like a an area where the guards kept their stuff and he steals like a guard's car. And like, it it was like the perfect way to break out. I'm like, man, that, that wasn't good. Yeah. And think about it. If, if Colorado would have been on their game, all those innocent people in Florida would not have died. Cause he yeah. would have been, conv- well, I don't know. You, you can't, you can't say that. I mean, maybe he wouldn't have been convicted in Colorado. Maybe they wouldn't have had enough evidence. I think they probably did. They sure as hell did in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he. It it seemed like he was just getting, I don't know, crazier and crazier. I I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say exactly, but there's all these theories about whether he had multiple personalities and 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 uh, bipolar and stuff. And I think they kind of diagnosed him as bipolar. That's what they were talking about in the Ted Bundy tapes. But uh, I don't know if he had multiple personalities, but he was definitely – there were there were things. Well, I, I would say he probably didn't because he knew he was killing women and killing people. And typically when you have multiple personalities, the personalities don't know the other one exists. Typically. And so if one personality is out killing all these women – and then he's a normal person on the other side. The normal person would never know he's a murderer. And so, of course, he would always plead innocent. But because at the end of, you know, right before his execution, he admitted to killing all these women and more, I feel that it was more along the lines of the bipolar. But still, I mean, that that man is emotionless. Emotionless, 100%. I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, it blows my mind, personally. No, it, it was crazy. But if, it was definitely crazy. I, I don't like to. I, I like to think about stuff like this sometimes, but I try not to because you start going down the rabbit hole and it really starts like making you think big time. But this is what the movies are supposed to do. They're supposed to make you think about these things. But if Ted Bundy would have been a serial killer today, because think about it, we haven't had a massive serial killer like this in a while. It's you know at least probably twenty years, maybe more. And that's mostly because of the advancement of technology. And a lot of it is also thanks to Ted Bundy, as horrible as that sounds. Because back then when he was doing all these murders, the states didn't really talk to each other. They had the FBI and that was it. And now if you commit a crime in one state. Even the counties, even the counties, the, he, he took advantage of the counties in Washington. Right. They didn't take it. They didn't even talk to each other. The counties. I know. And it's the same state. It's ridiculous. 
And so I think him doing this definitely changed how police work is done, especially at a level like that, where if something happens in another state and another county, they're letting everybody and their mom know. But especially thanks to cameras and smartphones and GPS and all that crap now. I mean, you can't, you know, they'll hunt you down in a heartbeat nowadays. So, you know, granted, it was it was part of the times back then. But because of him doing all this, the police have changed dramatically on how they have to deal with murder cases, especially unsolved ones. Yeah. So uh, he took advantage of his times. They, they even highlighted that in the Ted Bundy tapes that he, as he was studying law, he realized that nobody talked to each other. And he was kind of like, well, I can use this to my advantage. Or this is what they, they, this is all hypothesis, but this is what they thought he, he, he figured out and, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know, but it seemed like he did. Well, and I wonder if that's one of the reasons why he decided to go back to school and pursue a degree in law. Maybe. Just to, just to figure out more about, right. I mean. How he could keep killing and not get caught. Yeah, it might be. Possibility. Well, all right, Mike. So, I think uh, I think we've talked about Mr. Ted Bundy enough. Um, you know, I I recommend you watch this, but I think if you're going to watch this film, it definitely don't watch it around kids for sure. I mean, that should go without having to be stated, but some people are dumb, so definitely don't watch it around your kids. I mean, even though there's no murdering or anything, it's still just dark 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 film and, and it's based on reality but i definitely recommend watch this and watch the ted bundy tapes i think watching the ted bundy tapes and then watching this would be better but just make sure you watch both of them because they are definitely companion pieces yeah they they are and i, I do think that netflix released these kind of on purpose um the the ted bundy tapes were actually released i think on the 30th year uh anniversary of him being executed on the day. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I, I'm with you, Matt. Uh, you know, this is definitely not for children. And even though the, the, the movie doesn't have any of the killing stuff, it's, it's so dark. It's actually probably worse that you don't see it. You know, our imagination is so crazy. Uh, it's just implied. And then as it builds up towards the end there, you're like, you know, we both knew what was coming, but it was still interesting to see it portrayed in that way, or at least for me. I really liked how they did it. Yeah, I, I liked how they took the perspective of the girlfriend. I mean, she is the one that wrote the novel. And, you know, I mean, she, you know, um, another part that's not true, but uh, I'll talk about it as well. The end part where she goes and sits with him actually in the jail and talks with them didn't happen. It was actually a phone call, but the, uh, the makers of the film said it's, you know, a phone call isn't as dramatic as seeing the person, you know, actually right in front of you, obviously, especially with a serial killer. Oh yeah. That, that whole thing where, it, I mean, it's just so dramatic. The ending, it was, it was amazing. And I'm sure it's true to a certain level, but how she pointed out, you know, she was the one that called the first person that called and said, I think this is the serial killer that your guys are looking for. He looks a lot like my boyfriend kind of thing. And then on top of it, she goes, I wish I would have called earlier because less people would have died. And I'm sure she openly said that to him. I hope she did. And that just, I mean, that was just such a, so powerful to end this film. It really is. Oh yeah. No, it was. You're like, oh, man. Yeah, because, I mean, I can't even imagine the kind of pain and anguish she's going through for the rest of her life. On top of it, I, they even allude to it at the end as well, where there's different times. I don't know how true it is, but they show him, like, acting like he wanted to kill her and all this other stuff. And I guess in real life, um, he did attempt to kill her a couple different times, but it wasn't anything like trying to cut her up or anything. It was, like, sneaky stuff. Like, he tried to... He built like a fire and like blocked the chimney off or something. And when they were sleeping or something and anyways, but it's just, huh. it's just freaky. It's just super freaky, man. 
Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, well, with uh, with the app, Matt, uh, what are you going to rate this movie? Well, Mike, I think this is a pretty good movie. I, I didn't think it was anything special. Again, I think the uh, Ted Bundy tapes personally were better. Um, uh, you know, the acting is what really did it for me. And that second half is what saved it. That first half was just brutal for me. It was just brutal, but I, I feel that it's just average. I give it a three out of five reels. All right. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely like this more than you. Um, and, uh, I'm going to give this uh three and a half reels out of five uh i don't think the first half was too bad but you know i i i understand i understand what you're saying but i i didn't think it was too bad it it drove me nuts man it just did the if the whole if they would have shot the first half in at least a little bit more aligned like the second half but the second half is hard to compare because the second half is 100 percent the trial in florida you know and there's a clear start and there's a clear end when it comes to that because it's a trial. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. But they had to get to that point and they had to show some things and whatever. Right. right. But, and I'm not, I'm not hating on it. I mean, I'm not saying this is a two or a one. I just, you know, the, the thing that really sets it apart for me is the acting. This is specifically Zach Efron was fantastic i mean the story's good the perspective that it came from is great but overall the movie as a whole is just average for me yeah okay no that's cool man uh we're you know we're not gonna like everything all right so mike you know next week is a big week and i don't know how you're gonna do it but you have to see it Dude, I don't know how I'm going to do it. We but have to talk we, about it, Mike. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Uh, you know, you, you can't let John Wick 3 go without... You know, we have to see it. I mean, my brother-in-law already has tickets. He bought them last week. He's going to one of the showings on Thursday to see John Wick 3 in IMAX. And I won't lie, I'm a little jealous. <sighs> I'm, I, you know, I... I'm sorry that I'm so busy. I'm, it doesn't matter. We're gonna figure it out. If you don't we're gonna to figure sleep, it out. I don't care. We're, we're, we're gonna have get to it. See John Wick three. I don't care. We're gonna we're we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it done. We're gonna have John Wick three next week. Yeah, because I am definitely gonna do my darndest to see it either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday this week. I, I will do All right. my darndest. Okay, so that's it. You heard it here. We're doing John Wick 3 next week. No fear. We'll get it done. Definitely. Uh, it's it's John Wick 3. Was it Parabellum? Parabellum, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do that. I can't wait to see it, man. I actually, I love the John Wick series. Uh, man, Keanu Reeves is killing it. Are you doing a real uh, uh, I just watched uh, the first one and the second one recently with Mags, uh, and she's excited to see the third Did one. She never seen him before. She hadn't seen him oh, before. She gosh. she didn't know. Ah, so it was, I just really recently watched them. So well, good. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, Th- this is this is how much I like John Wick, and I wasn't a huge fan when I saw him in the theaters, but they grew on me. I have the first one and the second one on Blu-ray. Nice, dude. Nice. I have I have the first one on Blu-ray. I don't have the second one. I on. definitely want to sit down and do a, a rewatch this week of both of them if I can before I go. At least definitely the first one because I know it's been a while since I saw that. But, I mean, I, you know, when I first saw them in the theaters, I was like, wow, these are just insane. I think it might have just been so much eye candy. You know, there's so much going on and so much action. And then when you get to be at home and you know see it again it's just like the respect of the action and the story of the first two is just wow it's another level i just i love the gun accuracy because i feel like these movies 
highlight the realism of 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 gun stuff like you know he has to reload all the time because that's real life if you were going to shoot that many bullets and kill that many people you have to reload constantly do you want your mind to be blown mike and i love that they show that yeah blow it all right so I came across this a few weeks ago uh, on one of the uh, movie news websites I follow, like Slash Film or one of those, I don't remember, where they got a video of Keanu Reeves training. Now, I don't know if he's training for the most recent film or if it's the second one or the first one, but he's training and shooting the weapons, and he is 100% doing it legit, and he is like a force to be reckoned with in real life because all the shooting, all the reloading, all the speed, that's all real. That's not fake. Like he really is doing that shit. And no, no, I, I heard he, open range he competes and he has like, he's awesome. Yeah. He has like two, three guns on him. He has the, I mean, he's not, you know, he's not wearing the John wick outfit. He's wearing, you know, just te- jeans and a t-shirt, but he has the whole setup, you know, where he has like the pistols on each hip and he has, you know, the guns on his back and everything. And I mean, he literally is going through the whole thing. And I'm just like sitting there watching it with my jaw dropped because he's legit, dude. It's crazy. No, uh, he, uh, I think because of these movies, you know, worked on practicing doing like competitive shooting and he's actually competes now. And I think he's, really really good you know, he is he is it's crazy to watch these videos man i i don't know how much you've done shooting i you know i do my fair share not a not a ton i have a handful of firearms but not a ton and so i like to go out and i like to go planking and stuff but to see him do what he does in real life it's mind-blowing it really is i mean he pulls out the shotgun and he's I mean, it's 12 gauge shotgun, man, and he puts rounds through it like they're nothing. And I can't even, it just pains me just watching it. You know, my shoulder starts aching just watching it. <laughs> nice, nice. Now he, it, you know, uh, you're right. You know, all those scenes, it's like, they're as real as can be, man. Like, I really, I really think that the John Wick series is super cool. And I, I, it's all just because Keanu Reeves helped fund some of his uh, stunt coordinators who had an idea about a movie, which is awesome. Well, we can sit here and talk about John Wick all day. We probably should stop. We'll save it for next week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Damn. Matt, you got me diverged. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all dude. Right. It's awesome. It's freaking awesome. All right. John Wick is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it is awesome. All right. Uh, well, everybody, uh, thanks for listening uh, this week. And, uh, you know, catch us next week for the awesome John Wick 3 Parabellum review. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.